Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. Our live video chat on our Facebook page, Posh Pooch Designs. And uh, for those of you that haven't been following me very long, we try to do a live video chat every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. And it's Mountain Time because I live uh, south of Denver in a city called Parker. And so that's Mountain Time. If you don't know what time that is in your area, you can put that in Google and it'll tell you. I, I get people all the time ask me and I just tell them, just Google it. Google is your friend. And it's your friend when it comes to crochet as well. So, we have a lot to do today, and I see a lot of you already clinking in. Good morning, everyone. Rita and Marlene and Crystal and Callie and Amanda. Let me move my little marker thing down here. There's Tina and Pat and Barbara, Sophie, Kimberly, Dee, Trisha, April, Karen and Carol, Mary, Dana, Raylan, Raylan. That's a pretty name. Cheryl, Rose, Jane, Lori, Alicia, Sinead, Tommy, I'm sorry, Tammy. <laughs> I'm trying to get ahead of my brain here. Susan and Dana and Dawn. Look at all of you. Susan, Janet, Angela, Kitty, Brenda, Crystal, Marlene. Good morning, everybody. There's Gail and Teresa. Karen, Angel, uh, Angel, I had a friend in high school whose name was Angel. Let's see, Vanessa, Amy Jo. All right, looks like I got most of you. If I missed you, oh, I think I missed Karen. All right, so let's get started. All right, are you ready to do our crochet together? All right, but before we do that, we don't want to forget to clink in, do we? All right, so everybody grab whatever you're drinking. And clinkity, clink, clink, super clink. <laughs> All righty. So it is Tuesday. It's a fun day. And we're going to do our crochet together. I have some new yarns to show you. And I have some projects we worked on this week to show you as well. clink a I love that. <laughs> That's awesome, Rita. <laughs> You all, you know, I just, I just have to say, you know, last week we talked a little bit about breast cancer awareness and just cancer awareness in general. And I just really appreciate how a lot of you, you sent me messages and emails and comments about friends and family and even yourself who have gone through cancer issues. And it just, it just, uh, you know, blesses my heart that you would share your stories with me. You know, because cancer touches everybody in some way or another. We all have either had it or know someone in our family, friends, or circles that have gone through cancer. And it, it's a horrible, horrible thing. And so I just really appreciate how you opened up and just, you know, opened your hearts to me and told me your stories. And I really appreciate that. All right. Now, we clinked in. Do you want to jump right in and get busy with our crochet together? Now, one thing I do want to tell you about our crochet together. The only place that you'll find the written pattern is on the blog. All right. So you need to follow the blog or you can also find the blog link. When I shoot it over to um, YouTube, It'll it, the link underneath the video will be there and you can see the written pattern that way as well and i'm telling you that because when i do a crochet together live i have a tendency to go a little faster and i don't mean to and I'll, i am working on that but um when you go to youtube if it's going too fast and it's the same thing on facebook you can pause it as needed you know you can do a row or two and pause it and then catch back up but on youtube you can show you can slow the video down as well on your end but always remember you can always you know on your device push the volume up push the volume down you can make it faster you can make it slower you can pause where needed there's lots of things that you can do
Oh, Tina says uh, cancer took her parents. Yeah, cancer took mine too. You know, uh, I uh, I just saw that she that uh, Louise said, I'm sorry for your broken heart. And it does break our heart when we lose our loved ones. All right. Let's get to our crochet along. No, actually, it's a crochet together. All right. I'm going to over, click over to the top cam. And uh, what I have here is what we're going to be making. And it's a really easy pattern. I'm going to pull it off of here so you can see. And I really recommend that you make this with cotton yarn. And because we want it to be really sturdy. Let me move this towel for a second. And this is the way that it looks. We begin with a loop or, you know, circle. And then we're going to start with a certain number and we'll get that as we go. We'll decrease down, then we'll do some rows that are the same. We'll increase then we'll do another circle on the end, and then we will stitch all the way around. And there's two ways you can use this. You can fold this over the handle of your stove, refrigerator, dishwasher, like this, and slip your towel through here. The other way you can do that is to slip this through like this over your bar on your dishwasher, refrigerator, stove, and hang your towel here. So there's two different ways you can do it. It's really whatever you prefer. And I'll show you how to fold the towel and all of that when we get finished with our little crochet together. I'm gonna move those towels out of the way. I'm gonna use this yellow. And I, like I said, I really do recommend that you use a cotton yarn. You only need about an ounce. We're gonna use an H hook because we want our stitches to be a little bit snug. You'll need your scissors and then you'll need your needle to weave in your ends. All right, let me get my notes here so we get it all correct. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with our slip knot and we're going to chain 30 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get some more yarn out here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So I have 30 chains. I'm going to join this chain in a circle. So I'm going to move that tail of yarn out of the way. We want to make sure it doesn't twist up on us. We're going to go in that first chain, there we go, and stitch a slip stitch, and chain one. So now we have our first circle. And what we're going to do now is we're going to chain two more, so we have a chain three. Move my scissors out of the way there. And then we're going to stitch 12 more double crochets one in each of the next 12 and that'll give us a total of 13 because our chain three counted as our first i've got some glitter on my table i was doing a little bit with glitter yarn so if you see a sparkle don't worry about it i haven't been doing any crazy parties <laughs> all righty so we're going to stitch 12 more and plus our chain three will be 13 so one two three, four. Let me get some more yarn out here from my skein or skein of yarn, however you want to say it. There's another sparkle. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to hold this a little bit flatter so you can see my double crochets. Oops. Yarn over, go in the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops, yarn over, and go through the second two loops. <laughs> now, don't worry if as you're stitching these that it pulls a little like it did there. We've got a hole. That's not going to matter when we get finished, okay? Get in there. All right. 
right, let me see how many I've done because I stopped counting. Here's our chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I need to do two more for thirteen. Twelve and thirteen. All right, I'm going to have to start over because I messed up. We forgot to do our single crochets around. See, this is what happens when you do a live video. All right, so we're just going to forget what I just did there. We're going to chain one, and we're going to stitch one single crochet in each stitch around, okay? So let's call this take two. One single crochet in each of the stitches around. All right, so if you're working with me, doing this as I'm doing it, I'm super sorry. I left out row two. Okay, so <laughs> row one was our chain, or actually row one and a single crochet in each stitch was our chain. We skipped over and went straight to row two. We need to complete row one. So we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those chains around. I was looking at that and I thought, that is not sturdy enough. What did I do wrong? And if I was doing this as a regular video, I could stop that and start over and you wouldn't even know that I made a mistake. But I don't mind you knowing that I make mistakes because it happens. All right, so we chained 30. We joined that chain in a circle and now we're stitching one single crochet in each of those 30 chains around. And in, out, yarn over, go through. That's our single crochet. As if we had not done this, this little loop here would not be sturdy enough to hold our towels. All righty. Almost there. I see another sparkle. All righty. Let me get some more yarn out here to get us ready. All right. I've got one more single crochet to do. We're going to join to our first single crochet with a slip stitch. And now we're going to chain three. And now we're going to stitch 12 more. So we have 13 double crochets. So one, two, three, four, there we go, five, six, Seven, eight, get some more yarn out here. All right, let me count, make sure I've got my 13. So we did a, ch a chain of 30, one single crochet in each of the chains around and now we need 13 double crochets. One, because our chain three counted as our first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I need one more, so I have 13 double crochets. All right, there we go. We're just going to chain one and we're going to turn. Let me go ahead and show you how that looks first. That's the way it should look. All right, so we chained one and turn. What we're going to do now is we're going to decrease at the beginning and end of this row by stitching two double crochets together. Yarn over, we're gonna go in the first stitch and pull up a loop. Then we're gonna go in the next stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over and go through the first three. Yarn over and go through the next two. And now we're going to stitch one double crochet across until we reach those last two. And what we're doing is we're decreasing down from 13 double crochets to 11 because we're decreasing at the beginning and ending 
of this row. Alrighty. There we go. One more. And now we're going to do two double crochets together with our last two stitches, which is a double crochet in that chain three. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, then we'll go in the top of that chain, that chain three, and pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the three, yarn over, and go through the two. And chain one. So we had 13 and now we have 11. We chained one and turn and we're going to repeat what we just did. We're going to decrease at the beginning and end of this row. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, go in the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through those three, yarn over and go through those two. Then we'll double crochet across until we reach those last two stitches. And remember, when you decrease, you're going to have those two together, okay? Make sure you can tell the difference between where you decreased and your last stitch. You just have to look at it and get used to how it looks, I guess is the best way to put that. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because we decrease at the beginning and end. And we're not going to decrease any more for right now, so we're going to chain three. Back in there. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next and each stitch across. Our chain three will count as our first, so we'll go into the next and stitch one double crochet in each of those double crochets across. So we'll have nine double crochets. And chain three. Let's take a look at it real quick. Here's our chain 30. We did a single crochet in each of those chains around. And then we did 13 double crochets. We decreased at the beginning and end, so then we had 11. We decreased at the beginning and end, and so we had nine. And then this row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, counting our chain three, we have nine stitches. Okay, so now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch five, six, seven, and eight. Those are four more rows of just one double crochet in each stitch across. That's the center of our um, the center of our um, topper. I got distracted because I got a knot in my yarn trying to get it out of the way here. There we go. Isn't that annoying to get a knot in your yarn? <laughs> and it doesn't matter what brand of yarn you use, it seems like you end up with a, a knot every now and then. All right, so for four more rows, we're going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet across. Our chain three will count as one double crochet at the beginning of each row. And this yarn that I am using, this golden color, it is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. The bright orange one that I used and the green one for the other two, those are both a um, cotton from the um, Peaches and Cream. And sometimes the Peaches and Cream can be a little bit stiff. And depending on what I'm making with it, I might want what I'm making to be a little bit more stiff. So keep that in mind when you're making these because this one that's a little bit softer might not be as sturdy. It's not that it's not going to be sturdy. It's just because it's so soft, it's not going to be as stiff. I guess that's the word I should use. All righty. Looks like I got two more rows done, so I need to do two more. 
chain three and turn. I don't know why my yarn wants to not all of a sudden pull a bunch of that out of there. Maybe that will help. You know, you try to plan ahead and try to get your yarn ready so it won't have knots. And then there you go. You got knots. Alrighty, so this is one more row of one double crochet and each double crochet across. And I have nine stitches. Getting that last one. Chain three and turn. And so this is my last row of one double crochet and each double crochet across of those four repeats that we were doing. And I'll look at it again just to make sure. It's always good to do that because, especially since I'm distracted by this crazy yarn right now, but also you never know um, if you're watching a show or something that you're going to get distracted or even just having a conversation with a friend or, or a relative or something. You might get distracted and get off count. Get in that chain three there. All right, let me take a look at it real quick. Look at that knot. Is that not silly? All right. <clears throat> so this is how it's going to look so far. Again, here's our loop. We did the single crochet. Then we did 13, 11, and 9. And then we did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more rows so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 down the center rows. All right, so now we're going to chain three and we're going to increase on this next row. And so we'll stitch a second double crochet in that first stitch. Usually on these center rows, our chain three counted as our first stitch. And so we stitched a second one in there and that's going to cause us to increase by one. All right, so then we're going to stitch across and then in that last stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. If my yarn will let me, that is. <laughs> and that's kind of the, the fear I always have when I do a live video like this and try to do a demo, is that my yarn is not going to cooperate, and it's definitely not. <laughs> But you know what? There's no sense getting upset. Just laugh and keep going. <laughs> All righty. Now, this brings us to our last stitch, and we're going to stitch two double crochets in that last stitch. So now, instead of having nine, I have 11 double crochets. We're going to chain three and turn. And we're going to repeat what we just did. We're going to stitch an extra double crochet in that first stitch, because our chain three counted as our first, and then we'll stitch one in each across, and then two in the last. And that's going to bring us back up to 13 double crochets. There we go. All righty. It's moving along okay, so hopefully maybe it'll last until we're done without that knot being too big. <laughs> Alrighty, so now I've stitched across, and I'm going to stitch two double crochets in that last stitch. One and two. Alright, so I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to show you again. So we have 13, 11, and 9, and then we have our 9 in between. And then we have 11 and 13. Now, what you can do if you have a longer or thicker uh, bar on your dishwasher or whatever, you know, uh, you're going to hang this on and you want more room in here, in these rows of nine double crochets, you can make it bigger. If it's going to be shorter, you can even make that with less rows. So it's kind of um, up to you what size you want to do it. One thing I would say is that if um, you're giving this as a gift, I would do this size because this is basically measured off of my basic wash machine, uh, refrigerator, and my stove where I do hang towels. All right, so now we've made the center portion of our 
hanger. Now what we're going to do is we're going to chain 17 chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's move that out of the way there. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And this is going to form our loop. So we're going to come around here. Get my... <clears throat> there we go. One to drop. So we're going to come over here and we're going to join this with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three at the beginning of that row. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn. And it's very important that you turn your work here. All right. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to place a single crochet in each of those chains. one single crochet in each of those 17 chains. Go. Another thing to remember is this loop seems a little small to you or a little big to you. I tested out several different sizes for this chain loop. And if you go too small, it really uh, crunches up the towel but if you go bigger, it makes the towel droop. And you, so you um, wanna be careful if you add chains in here, if you're using like a thicker towel or a thinner towel. So keep that in mind when you're working your towel topper. I call this the flip through because there's no buttons, there's no ties, no elastic, no plastic rings or metal rings or anything like that. Just good sturdy cotton yarn. And a towel, of course. All right, so now I'm back to my side. Let me pull this yarn out. Hopefully I won't get too bad of a knot. All righty. So what we're going to do now, <laughs> my yarn fell on the floor. I don't care. <laughs> At least there's carpet down there. What we're going to do now is we're going to stitch single crochets down the side we're going to stitch single crochets around here. We're going to stitch single crochets down this side. We'll stitch single crochets back around this loop and join right here. Okay, now the key to getting a nice even side is when you're stitching down the side, stitch your single crochets in the sides of the stitches and not the holes. All right, so See where the stitches go in between those little loops, even if it's snug, and stitch your single crochet in there. If you stitch in these big gaping holes, it doesn't look as neat, in my opinion. Now, there might be a time where you have to stitch through a hole because there just really isn't any other place to put that stitch. But for the most part, if you want a nice, neat appearance, go in the sides of those stitches not the holes. And there is not a set number of single crochets to work down the side. We're just going to work them down. And you got to eyeball it, look at it, see how nice and tidy it is. <laughs> Jumping around on me there. See how nice and tidy it looks. You don't want your stitches too close together and you don't want them too far apart. Let me show you what I've got here. Okay. All right, let's keep going, even though my knot, my knot in my yarn is not being cooperative. Now, I could cut that and rejoin it, but I really don't want to if I don't have to. All right, so I'm just going to move on down here. Stitching down the side. There we go. Now this brings us up to our first loop or circle. Let's get that tail out of the way. And then we're just going to single crochet around that, stitching one single crochet in each of those single crochets. And I'm feeling like I'm spending more time getting this knot out than I am 
showing you how to do this. There we go. All right, one single crochet and each single crochet around. Well, if you're going to watch this later, just pause it where my knot issues are <laughs> and keep going. <laughs> this is a really simple pattern and it works up really quick. And if you're going to give somebody some gifts, like say a housewarming or birthday, or they got a new house or something, or they just got married or, you know, just moved into a new apartment or just went off to college or whatever, these are great to have. They're great to buy a couple of dish towels and make a couple of these that match, you know, and it's, they're just really great to have around. All righty, well... All right, I'm going to quit fiddling with this because it's taking too much time. And I'm just going to grab another end. And I'll join it in and we'll keep going. Because I feel like I'm wasting more time. Let me get back in there where I want to be. There we go. All right, so we'll just pull that in. Well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> All right, pull that in. <laughs> and we'll just keep going, and I'll just have an extra one to weave in there. All right, so now we're going to go down this other side. <laughs> well, you know, uh, my grandson says I'm weird, but in a good way, so. <laughs> and I learned a long time ago, it's always best to laugh at yourself, right? <laughs> All right, let's keep going down the side of our towel topper here. I did warn you that when we do our crochet together, they do take a little bit longer. So we'll keep that in mind as we go. And if you can't watch the whole thing, you can always come back and watch it later. It'll always be on Facebook. And once I tweak it up a bit it will be over on YouTube all right so I'm moving down the side here of my towel topper there we go almost there get in those stitches all right so let me show you real quick we'll just disregard where I joined that because of that silly knot and this is gonna have to be weaved in as well but we stitched up here on the side. We went around those single crochets, one single crochet in each one, and then evenly single crocheted down here. And now we're going to do the same on the second side. We're just going to stitch one single crochet in each single crochet around. The main reason I like this style is I don't like cutting my towels in half. I don't know why. It just like I just don't want to do that. A lot of people cut them in half and then add the trim. And when I do that, I even still don't cut the towels. I just I can't do it. <laughs> I just don't want to. All right, so there we single crocheted around. We're going to slip stitch in that next stitch. Cut our yarn. We're going to pull it in through the next stitch so it looks nice and neat and tie that off. Now I'm not going to take the time to weave all that in. Okay, so I'm going to hide them behind so you can't see them. <laughs> and that's the way that it should look. All right, real quick, let's show, let me show you what you do with your towel. I'll just grab this orange one since that's the one I made to go with this. All right, so you have your towel, and if you fold it in halves like this, it lays okay, but it doesn't look as pretty. All right, so what I do is I go ahead and fold this back like this. All right, and then I sort of scrunch it up. Take the two ends. 
and pull it through. Now, it, when you hook it on to your stove or whatever, you're going to need to do one loop, hook it over the bar, and then do the other loop. All right. This one has the puppies on it. And if you're wondering where I got these towels, I got these both at Hobby Lobby. This one has kittens on it. This one has puppies on it. And all of their stuff at Hobby Lobby for fall and Christmas is 40% off already. <clears throat> all right. And that's how you do the flip through topper. <laughs> Even when you have a knot in your yarn. <laughs> I have to tell you, I just... I, I'm the kind of person that I've just learned that you roll with the punches and if you get a knot in your yarn you just keep going and try to fix it. I should have cut it and fixed it earlier instead of fighting with that knot. But that's how easy that is. Again, the written pattern will be on the blog and I'm going to add a couple of pictures of these that we did and so that'll be there. Okay, we've already passed our half hour but I do have a couple of things that I want to show you that we did this week. Um, one of the things is our um, blanket in a bag. We did part one, which was the bag portion. And tomorrow, we're going to do the second part, which is the blanket portion. And then how to attach it to the bag and add the second handle. And then I'm also going to show you how to fold it. Because one of the things that I get all the time is I made it. I love it, but I can't figure out how to fold it. And so I've got a picture on the blog that shows you, but I'm going to go ahead, you know, and show you how to do that as well. And that's tomorrow. It'll only be two parts. Part one was yesterday. Part two will be tomorrow if you're making the quillow or blanket in a bag. The other thing we did was the dog bone mat. And I updated the pattern. I explained to you how you can make it bigger if you want it for a bigger dog, how to add more rows and length and it's really kind of neat because it's just all done and half double crochet so it's a nice tight it's done with two strands and this is a blog that's out there as well as a brand new video and i also explained to you how to take that and make it into a silly <laughs> stuffy and my dogs love this they like to lay on it so anyway we did that one also and then the other thing we did was this um shawl that's behind me this is the calming shawl. It's super easy to make. It just takes one skein or skein of shawl and a ball or any medium weight number uh, four yarn will work for it as well. It, and I love this is a, a, a skein of yarn that I got on sale because now they're called cake in a ball and they use the same ones, uh, the same yarns. They just package them differently. And we added the little flower. And I, I gave you the link for that if you want to use it. That's just a loopy flower that I had online. I added a sparkly button. And so that was one that we did um, this week as well. Brand new pattern, brand new video. All right. So those are the three patterns that we did this week. Um, we've got some fun stuff coming up. Um, <clears throat> a few more fall things. And then we're going to start jumping into Christmas stuff and holiday stuff. So I'm really excited about that. And I also have still some patterns that I don't have videos for that we're going to be adding those as well. So we got lots of fun things coming in the next three months. The new yarn that I wanted to show you real quick is this new stuff from Lion Brand. It's called Twisted. <laughs> Each skein has 3.5 ounces. It's a medium five. And it's a really interesting yarn. I'm going to go back over to the top camera real quick and show you this. This is a really interesting yarn because it's twisted together, but it's not a solid. Let me move this up. It, it's kind of a bump. It's really interesting. And I've got a pattern. I picked out um, the red and the green because I've got something that I want to use this for for us for Christmas. All right. So <clears throat> we got new stuff coming. Lots more fun. And don't forget. Next week, we're going to reveal the winner of the October giveaway. So make sure, and the way you enter that is go back <clears throat> to last week's Facebook video or last week's YouTube video and just comment. Okay, so 
what we do is we go through all those names in the comment section, we throw them in the random generator, and whoever's name comes up, that's who wins. Unless you've already won. If you've already won this year, then we redo it, okay? Um, that way it gives more people a chance um, to win. All right? So um, we laughed our way through that silly um, tutorial, but it is a very useful item. And so thanks for being with me today. And I just want you all to remember, I love all of you so much. You all mean so much to me because we are a big crochet community and we're so great to each other. I love our group, the PPD Puppy Love Crochet Group. Everybody is so encouraging and so nice in there. And I so much appreciate it. If you want to be a part of our group, you are welcome. Just remember this. It's a no drama llama zone. <laughs> and so is this YouTube and Facebook videos. We don't like drama. We do not. We just like fun, yarn, and crochet patterns. <laughs> So I'm going to let you go on that note. And remember, I can't do what I do without all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.